네, 안녕하세요. 어, 그, 음, 이제 오늘, 어, 벌써 이제 6주차가 되었고, 12번째 수업. 어, 제가 이제 그 수업, 그 비디오 올릴 때, 음, 몇 번째 수업인지 그걸 잠 어, 올려서, 어, 번호를 쓰잖아요. 12번째 더라고요 예, 네, 벌써, 어, 우리가 이제 그 온라인 수업으로 이제 만난 지 12번째 수업이 이제 되겠습니다. 어, 뭐, 이번, 아, 이번 수업부터 이제 여러분들이 좀그 비디오를 열심히 어, 잘볼수 있도록 도와주기 위해서, 어, 어 중간중간, 어, 그 강의 중간에 그 팝퀴즈, 뭐 우리나라 말로 하면은 쪽지 시험 뭐 이런 식으로 되겠는데, 뭐 지금은 온라인이니까는 어, 쪽지 시험은 불가능하죠. 어, 그래서, 이제 강의 중간에 그 PPT를 이제 띄워놓고, 그, 약간 이제, 문제 딱 보여주고, 여러분들이 이제 문제를 제출할 수 있도록, 그렇게 팝 퀴즈를 이제 보려고 합니다. 그팝 퀴즈는 한 일주일에 한번 정도 어, 수행을 하려고 하고 있고요. 그래서, 어쨌든, 이제 온라인 그 수업의 이제 장점은 여러분들이 언제든지, 뭐, 비디오로 이제 볼수 있다라는 거니까는, 어, 팝퀴즈의 이제 제출 기한은 뭐, 일요일 밤까지로 하겠습니다. 왜냐면은, 모든 수업이 다 지금, 어, 온라인 수업을 하기 때문에, 그, 뭐 여러분들이, <웃음> 뭐, 이렇게 몰아서 볼 수도 있고, 다른 날볼 수도 있기 때문에, 뭐, 그 점을 고려를 해가지고, 팝퀴즈의 이제 제출 기한은, 그, 일요일 밤까지로 이제 제, 어, 정하도록 하겠습니다. So from now on, I will uh, also we will take pop quizzes. So pop quiz is the uh, in Korean j o k j e s i o n So pop quiz means it's the very simple. Very, so I will make the uh, very simple questions and then several questions. Uh, for example, two or three questions, and then these questions are related to the this course, not today's class, but uh, so, so the pop key, for the pop keys, I will uh, show the, the presentation slide for the pop keys, and then this slide will show the, some questions for the pop quizzes. And then so you can submit the, the answers of the pop keys uh, until the, the uh, Sunday night, so, so I plan to uh, provide the pop quiz for uh, one per week. So and then also in the middle of the lecture, for you know to help you to watch the our lecture videos. So I I will prepare the pop quizzes in the in the middle of the lecture, and then also you can uh. Actually, this this pop quiz is very simple. So you can just and uh, write the answers. So yeah, you need to uh, write down your name and uh, student ID on the on the top of the your uh, submission. And then also you can write write the only answers for pop quizzes. And then also submit the, this this pop quiz as the a PDF format. You can. Usually generate the PDF from the from uh, Notepad, Notepad, uh, Microsoft Word or HWP uh, uh, word processor. So also I will uh, post uh, this on um, this on the announcement on the blackboard, so you don't need to worry about the some. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, and then I will try to use the, some new tool, and then so it's a PDF annotation tool. <laughs> so in the previous class we uh, uh, discussed about uh, some single cycle processor. So this uh, topic is related to the hardware implementation of the processor. And then in order to implement the processor, we first need to Design the architecture of the processor. So, in this, in the previous class, 
we covered some operation of the normal instructions, computer instruction, and then this operation of the normal instruction is defined in the instruction set architecture document. So what is the hardware implementation? So hardware imp implementation is uh, to make the hardware to provide uh, some functions and uh, some execution functions and then some hardware module to execute the, some uh, instructions, instructions which is defined in the instruction set architecture document. So uh, actually, so uh, in, the, in, in this in this chapter, so we will learn about uh, some hardware implementation issue and the architecture of the real computer processor. But as as I explained, we will uh, this computer processor will support the only selected instructions. So it is because if the this real uh, computer processor uh, support the all instruction all instructions defined in the risk five instruction set architecture, then the hardware will be very complex. And then, but so we are learning, so we are learning the example of the computer processor implementation. So in this chapter, we will just uh, cover the some few instructions like uh, two. What's this? Two memory instruction and then some arithmetic and logical instructions, add, sub, and or, and then one control instruction. And then this is enough to explain the operation of the computer hardware, processor hardware. Okay, so I will I explain about the, some instru instruction execution. So Implementing the hardware is to support the oper operation of the instruction. So we need to first, um, we need to know the operation of the each instruction first to implement the hardware that support the instruction set architecture. So this is the basic operation of the Uh, basic operation of the instructions, it will risk five instructions. So the hardware also supports the, this, this operation of instructions. Okay, and then this is the overview of the CPU. So in order to support the, this hardware, hardware operation, the hardware provides uh, some uh, uh, computer processor provides the hardware compo component to handle the operation of each instruction. So we mentioned the uh, if uh, so this component is called the data path. And so what is the definition of the data path? Data path is the element that process data and addresses in the CPU. So what is the what is what are they those components? Registers, ALUs, MOXIS, and memories. So it is actually this is the register files and then ALUs. So these are called the data paths. So each data path uh, support the operation of the some part of instruction. So for example, what's the normal instruction? Uh, add x1, x uh, what's this? x2 and x3. So we know the operation of the, this, this instruction. Like a, we need to also first define the program count for this instruction, and then what's this? And then with the, this instruction, need to read a parent from the register file. So read a parent from the register file, and then so this instruction need to uh, performs add operation like like add, so we need the adder, <laughs> and then finally this instruction need to store the the final result to the register file. So write result to RF register file. So these are the instruction of the 
at x1 comma x2 comma x3 so in order to support the, this operation the, uh, the, the computer processor uh, provide the data path and this is the some comp hardware component so for the PC the data computer processor support the for PC register and PC update logic and then also computer processor uh, have includes the register files and then for add, oper add operation computer processor is has the ALU and then for the, uh, for writing result result to register file computer processor also has register files so these are the some basic components that support the operation of the instructions these are the called the data paths and then also uh, so, I, so these are the data paths for the instruction fetch and and then yes. so this is the data path of the instruction fetch and then for the R format instruction we need the register files and then I this is the same format of the R format instructions this is uh, uh, R format instruction is support the arithmetic and logical instructions so in order to support the uh, support the operation of this alpha main instruction alpha main instruction requires the two source uh, two source registers and the one destination registers so to not to support the, this uh, uh, instruction uh, like a uh, Handles the handles uh, reading operands and writing results to the some memory or some storage space. The computer processor has the register files. It's the registers, but this uh, uh, some group of registers are called the register files. So these are the register files. And then we know that for normal uh, arithmetic and logical operation needs the two sources and then one destination. So you know, for two source registers, this uh, register files has the two ports for the read registers and then one port for the write to registers is the for the destination. And then also register file requires the data in out port. So this is the data in port for the write data. And then there are two data read ports for the operand reads. Also the adding operation is performed in the ALU. The ALU is the arithmetic logical unit. So this ALU receives the two operand data from the register file and then generate the result for the operation. So actually ALU need to support the various types of the operations such as the add, sub, and, and or. So we need to control the operation mode of the ALU. And then for the load and store instructions, so what is the uh, behavior or operation of the load instruction? What is the load? What is the definition of the load instruction? So read data from register file and then store. No, 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 no. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, this is good. What is the definition of load instruction? So load, load actually LD means the load double word. So fetch data from mem memory 
and then store data to rest the file. So this is the load instruction actually the load instruction actually move data from memory to register file and then you store is the uh, SD store double word the store instruction is the opposite of the load instruction so for this uh, in order to support the, these operations we need the processor needs the data memory so data memory has uh, has the some data accessed by the load and store instructions right? and then the data memory the memory is accessed by the address and then if the address is input to the memory then data is output to uh, data is generate uh, data is fetched from the memory based on the this address and how about the write data so right so for the store instruction, if if the processor uh, gives the uh, some memory write control signal, then with the uh, target address, then data is can be stored in the data memory. So and then we need the uh, we, uh, the processor needs the uh, immediate generation unit from the uh, instruction format. So I believe uh, I uh, explained the, the this slide. And then, so let's talk about the branch instruction. So what is the branch in, uh, format of the branch instruction? So actually, uh, in the previous slide, I mentioned that uh, this chapter will uh, this processor will support the one branch instruction. What's that? P E Q. So that means branch if equal. So branch instruction will uh, compare two register values. And then if the register values are equal each other, then the PC is changed to the target address. So for branch instruction, so what is the operation of this branch instruction? It's the same to the, actually, we need the PC. The first, the, in order to fetch the branch instruction from the instruction memory, then the PC needs to uh, access the instruction memory. So first, the PC, PC the program counter, and then what's the second operation? So read operands from operands from where RF because this branch in instruction compares the values of two register file registers. So read operand from the RF and then performs compare 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 two values and then which operation is required not compare two values two integer values to the sub subtract and then PC update but there are two kinds of PC update for the branch instruction what's that PC plus four if the branch is not taken it's not the condition does not meet the actually the uh, this uh, the comparison that, that means the condition does not meet the some defined condition by the branch instruction and then what's the second operation PC is updated by target so these other required operation for branch instruction so actually the PC, PC is the same for the for all instruction and then read operand from RF is uh, actually is the same to the okay. so this this operand is the same to the arithmetic alphabet instruction 
for the opponent read. The branch instruction needs to read two opponents from the register file. And how about the comparison? So I said that for comparison, we need to, uh, actually, the processor needs to perform subtraction. So we can use the ALU. So use ALU, subtract, and check zero up. So this is required. And then we need also the PC can be updated by PC plus four or target address. Then how can we calculate the target address of the branch instruction? So branch instruction also has the immediate field, like a, yes. So, so this immediate field is the, the target PC will be calculated as the PC, current PC plus immediate, in, immediate value. But immediate value multiplied by two. So it's the sign extended displacement. So actually, actually we, we know that, so I explained that the size of the program count for risk five is 64 bit. So this is the 64 bit. So, and then immediate value is the tooth complement value. So in order to calculate this add operation for the PC plus immediate, so the immediate will be, should be signed, the signed extension should be performed for the immediate value. And then shift to left one for the multiply by two and then add to the PC value. These are, these are the operation of branch instruction. So, so for the branch instruction, so the operands should be read from the register file. So here, so from so, so branch instruction generate the two register numbers for read operation. And then the data is read from the register files here. And then immediate value in order to calculate the target address immediate value is insert, uh, given to the immediate generator and then the 64 bit value will be generated and then we need to perform the shift shift operation because for the multiply by two operation and then this value should be added to the program counter, current PC value. So, and then this is the branch target. Also, in order to compare the uh, data of the two registers, then we need to perform the A, we need the ALU, and then the ALU performs the sub instruction. And then also this instruction should be checked for the all zeros. So, as we follow the operation of the branch instruction, then we uh, easily uh, know the required data path and then connections between uh, data paths. And then uh, in order to execute uh, some uh, instructions, the data path, uh, the, the input for the da all data paths should be maintained. Also, at, in the, within the one clock cycle, the data path only can do one uh, operation. So that means that in a, in within the one cycle, the one clock cycle, one cycle clock period, some same data pass such as the let's think about the rest file. Same data pass, so the rest file cannot read the rest rest the data for the add instruction and then the following sub instruction. So only one instruction can be supported by the one data pass within one clock cycle. And then, then what's the problem? So actually in the real computer hub, so uh, mm -hmm. so 
we learned that the real computer system uh, instructions and user data is stored in the same main memory. So actually, the computer processor cannot distinguish the instruction data and the, uh, some normal user data or number numbers. So these are these data all have all of these data have binary format, and then these data are stored in the same main memory. But if the actually the instruction memory and then uh, there are two different memories for the instruction memory and then data memory in the computer processor is it because so we cannot support support the actually the, the same uh, single data path component cannot support different operation within a one clock cycle so what's the problem load and store instruction cannot access the same memories with the instruction. So for this load and store instruction, the this we first access the memory for the instruction fetch, and then we need to also access the memory for the data read or data store, data read or data write. So, and then that's the problem. So we assume that uh, each instruction, uh, no, no, each data path cannot handle multiple operations within a, within one, one clock cycle. But this load and store instruction requires the two different operations for the memories. For this reason, we need to separate the memories for instruction and memories for data. So computer processor has the two different types of memory, instruction memory, and then data memory. And it is good for the performance of the computer system. So if the memory, the instruction and data share the same memory unit, then for the load and store instruction, require the two cycles performing the, executing the this memory instruction because the memory cannot be accessed to for different operations in within a one cycle. So for the and then if there are two different types of memories, instruction and data memories, then control of the computer process will be much simpler. So So this is the, some some important uh, tip or some important uh, methodology to impl uh, to implement the computer hardware. So this slide shows the archive and the load store data path. So as I explained, so this is the rest file, ALU, and then and the memory. And then based on the operation of the instructions, the each port of the each uh, each port of uh, each data path is connected to each other. So this is the instruction. So instruction has the binary format. So from the from the part of the instruction, so you can see the R format instruction. The previous slide or uh, I format instruction. And also in the previous slide, so for the load, and then this is for the uh, arithmetic. So from the instructions, uh, starting from the instruction, these instructions are connected to the uh, the input port of the register file like here. So this is the should be RS1 and RS2, and then what is the right, right register? It should be all the field. And then, so when the RS and RS1 and RS2 field is given to the register file, the register file uh, generate the output from the target registers. So these registers are connected to the 
ALU. And then also the second bronze data can be given to the ALU. But we know that sometimes the ALU receive, need to receive the immediate value for the load instruction. And then also the ALU needs to receive the data from the register file. So that means that the, this is the input of ALU. Then we need the multiplexer to select from the two different inputs here from the immediate generator and the, from uh, registers. So we need to set the multiplexer before the one ALU input. So and then that means that we need to generate the ALU source control signal. Also, we need to generate the ALU operation selection signal. So, so this ALU can uh, generate the zero det detection signal for the BEQ, branch instruction. Also, the ALU result can be given to the address of the data memory. Why? For the load instruction. Load x1 uh, immediate x2 like this one. So the address of the load instruction is uh, address of a load instruction comes from the immediate value plus base address stored in the source register. So address is connected to the ALU for the this add instruction. Also for the store instruction, the store, for the store instruction, the data memory received the uh, data from the register file because the, what is the store instruction? X1, immediate, X2. So this is the address of the store instruction. And then this is the source address, a uh, source register of a store instruction. So the memory, data memory also received the data from the register file here. And then we need to also control the operation of the data memory for store and load instruction. So this data memory requires the control signal mem write and mem read. So what's the result, final result of the, these instructions? Uh, actually, the load instruction doesn't uh, doesn't require write back. So so write back means that the uh, final result is written back to the register file. This is the definition of the write back. But load inst instruction does not require write back because the data. No, no, oh, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So load instruction requires the write back. But store instruction does not require write back because the data is written to the data memory. Sorry, sorry about that. So I will repeat, the load instruction requires write back, but store instruction does not require write back. So the data can be generated from the memory for the load instruction. And then also the data is data, the final result can come from the output of the ALU for the arithmetic operations like add. Uh, sub and or. So this is the written data uh, to the, the data written to the register file. So the data can, the, the right data can be from the data memory and then the right data can be from the ALU, out of the ALU. So we need also multiplexer here and then also we need the selection signal. So these are the, this is the data path for the memory of uh, R type and memory operation. And then also we, uh, based on the, this uh, data path, uh, we include the, some data path for updating program, program counter and reading data, uh, reading instructions from instruction memory. So this is the PC register, and then this is 
this adder, this is the adder, this adder generates the PC plus 4. And then also we need the, some different target PC from for the branch instruction, BEQ. So this is the target PC that come from that comes from branch instruction. So this is the immediate plus PC. So it's a PC here, and then immediate value is here. So what is the input of the program counter register? So there, there are two sources for the input of the program counter registers. So we also need the MOX here. And then we need the control signal is the PC source. So this is feedback to the input of the program counter here. And then the program counter is sampled by the clock. So these are the full data paths of the single cycle processor. Okay. So, so actually this single, uh, uh, this implementation is not, I think this implementation is not uh, easy, uh, not, not difficult. So, so because based on the operation of the instruction, we just uh, select the required data path, and then also based on the op in operation of the instruction, we define the, the required port for, in, for each data path, and then we connect the port of several data paths, also based on the in operation, operation of the instruction. And then that's it, and then we uh, add the, some multiplexers, and then also we define the control signals for this multiplexer and data path. And that's it. This is the uh, architecture of the single cycle processor. Uh, and, and then this single pro single cycle processor will execute one instru instruction per clock. So within the one clock cycle, one is instruction will be executed. And then this architecture is very simple. It's a very simple. Okay, then so I prepared the pop quiz, a pop quiz for you, the student. Okay. So this is the pop quiz for today's class. So there are three problems, three simple problems, but this problem Problem is problems are related to chapter one. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so, so these are the very simple questions, right, about the Moore's law and then performance of the computer system. So, it's actually, uh, in, for the first first uh, first question, what is Moore's law currently that you can select from the uh, uh, between performance and number of transistors and double or triple every two years. So you can select, you need to select two items in the, in this sentence. And then this is the, this question is related to some different types of the computer system. And then the question number three is related to the performance of computer system. So it's a very simple question. So just write the write to your student ID and name and then today's date. And then just write the answers for these questions. And then generate the PDF file and then submit your answers to the Blackboard. So I will generate the, some submission section for this pop quiz. So you can submit the Answers for this pop quiz until uh, Sunday night. <sighs> oh, okay. 
Uh, let's keep going to the next topic. Uh, this is the some implementation of the implementation scheme for the uh, hardware component in the single cycle processor unit. Okay, here is the. <clears throat> so let's first think about the ALU uh, arithmetic logic unit. So actually, the ALU is required for uh, process processing uh, arithmetic and logical instructions. Also, the ALU is used for uh, generating address for load and store instructions. Also, the ALU is used for uh, generating ta generating no no uh, comparing two different uh, uh, res register values for branch instructions like a BEQ. Uh, okay, BEQ X1 and comma X2 and target. So. This, this ALU is used for different types of instructions. So that means that we need the, uh, some control signals for ALU operating mode, operation mode. So, so this uh, single clock, uh, plus single clock, single cycle processor supports the, uh, some few, a few instructions. And then let's go back to the previous slide. Okay. So. Our processor supports the, these instructions, load, store, add, sub, and or, and BQ. So, ALU supports the different type of instructions for these instructions. No operation for the, these instructions. So, let's see the uh, required operations for ALU. So, for the load and store instructions, ALU, uh, works as the adder. So add, adding operation is required for ALU. So this function is the add. So this add operation is used for generating address based on the base address plus immediate value of load and store instructions. Now how about the branch instruction? So this processor only supports the BEQ instruction. So BEQ compares the uh, two register values like x1 and x2. So in order to uh, support the, this, oper this operation, the ALU need to works as need to uh, work as subcollector. So sub. So sub operation is is should be provided by the ALU. And how about the all time instruction? Uh, so actually for this uh, processor. We support this processor supports add, sub, and or or different type of processing for ALU. So based on the API code of the instru R type instruction, the ALU change the each operation mode. So this is the some uh, candidate candidate ALU control read for the different functions. So. So in summary, the ALU requires the four different functions and, or, and add, and subtract. Then this add is used for also load and store. And then this sub subtraction is used for BEQ. So ALU requires the four different operation, operation mode. So with, with the for the <coughs> for different operation mode, we can select the ALU control bit. So, and then uh, let's see the some uh, di a different operation mode by the some instruction types. So, ALU sub support the different instructions and the different type of instructions. And then we know that the load and store is the memory type operation instruction and BEQ is the uh, control instruction and R type instruction is the arithmetic and logical instructions. Uh, let's see the one. Okay. So for the different type of instructions, AL, the ALU 
OP beep, the OP control signal can be defined differently. So this is just a definition. So we can select any combination for the different type of instructions. So, so for the memory instructions, we set the ALOP, this bit code is the zero. And then for the control instructions, such as branch instruction, the ALOP code is the zero one. So it, this is the ALOP control signal. And then for the R time instruction, just, it's just a definition. So for the R time instruction, we set the ALOP bit is one zero. So this ALOP bit is defined for the different type of instructions. And then let's see the some operation. Then uh, for the, this different type of operation, we can uh, see the OP code field in the instruction field. So let's see the uh, some uh, operation code. Okay, so this is the instruction summary uh, and the some inst uh, chapter two instruction uh, slide, and then page forty four. You can find uh, this in uh, instruction summary table in the page forty four in the chapter two instruction slide. So as you can see, uh, there are several types of instructions. I'll type. Oops. So let's see. Uh huh. Uh, R type instruction and I type and then S type and then some different type of instructions. So this R type is the as I as I said this is the arithmetic and uh, logical instructions. So actually the, for the, this R type instruction the OP code is the same. So what is the OP code? OP code is a uh, uh, OP code is in the located in the LSB seven bit of the uh, instruction format, R type instruction format instruction uh, instruction. So for the R type instruction, the OP code field is the whole OP code full field is the same one zero zero one zero uh, no, zero one one zero zero one one. And then the operation of different operation like add and sub is distinguished by the this function field, function seven field, like a 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So let's see the end instruction and or instruction. Then the function three field is different. And then the function seven field is the same, all zeros. But function three field is the different. So for the different uh, instruction for the in the R type instruction, so we can detect the this R type instruction by checking the OP code field, like seven bit OP code field, and then if the OP code field is the zero zero one one zero zero one one, then we can know that this is the R type instruction. And then from this R type instruction, we can uh, check the uh, different things and add sub and or and instruction by checking the function three field and the function seven field. So, uh, okay. so Mm, I don't know why OP code field is. I think this is the um, different OP, OP code field. So, so by checking the, this uh, function three and uh, function seven code and then for the R type instruction, we can distinguish the different AAU functions and, uh, and the different instructions. And then for the different instruction, we can define the, we can uh, map the uh, some AAU control bit like a. Uh, for the adding operation is the 0, 0, 1, 0, subtract 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and then for the end is a 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 1. And then let's see the low BQ. Uh, it's about the BQ. So if we, we can find the BQ instruction in the SV field. Right. 
the SB field here, SB type instruction, and then what is the opcode? Opcode is the 1100111. So if the opcode field is the this 1100111, then we, we can know that this instruction is BEQ. Uh, it's the some uh, branch instruction. And then the BK is also uh, checked by, we can know the, some different type of branch instruction by checking the function 3 code 0, 0, 0. And then we can know that if the function 3 field is O0, then this is the BEQ. So, actually, in, the, in our uh, single cycle processor, then we define that the ALU OP, OP uh, control signal is set for the, uh, what is it, what, what is it, 0, 1, for the branch instruction. So, so we can uh, select the ALU OP field for the, it, for the branch instruction as the 0, 1, and then actually this process only supports the BEQ. So when the branch instruction is decoded, then ALU performs the subtract operation. And how about the load and store instruction? Well, this is the load instruction, and then we own, this process only supports the load double word. And then for the, <laughs> the, also the store instruction is the SD. So we can distinguish the uh, this load instruction and store instruction by checking the OP code field also. So for the OP code for the load instruction, OP code field is the 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. And then for the store instruction, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. So store instruction. So we can decode the instruction by checking the OP code field and uh, function 3 and the function uh, 7 field. So based on the, this instruction format, we can generate the ALU control signals. Okay, uh -huh. so uh, this uh, slide summarized uh, what I explained. So uh, the R type instruction, the OP code field, and then by expecting the function 3 and then and function 7 and function 3 code right here, then the uh, operate, ALU operation is determined. Also, by checking the ALU OP code, OP. A control signal, it's not OP code, ALU OP control signal, then we can also select the ALU operation control signal. This is the, these are the dedicated to the branch instruction. Also, ALU OP signal, control signal O0 is uh, mapped to the, mapped to the, mapped to the memory operation. Mm -hmm. So this operation, uh, for the memory operation, the ALU performs the add here, and then for the branch instruction is the sub. Also based on the this function seven and function three field, the ALU operation control read is also defined. So the so based on the data path we designed. So the control signals and the control units are included. So this what this this control unit generate the branch you know, uh, and then these control signals branch mem read mem to register ALOP and mem write ALU source and the reg write register write signals and then this control unit receive the instruction. Uh, Instruction be filled from 6 to 0. And so it's in the 6 to 0. Then this control signal generate the control unit generate the, these control signals. So, and, um, so I already explained that based on the, this OP code field, the ALU OP, OP control signal can be also generated. So this AL control, this is the ALU control unit. The ALU control unit received the ALU OP control signal from the control unit, main control unit, 
Also, this ALU control unit received the um, additional field from the instruction for the function 7 and function 3 field. It's a function 7 and the function 3 field. So, based on the, this uh, the OP code and then function, function field, the ALU control signal is generated. Okay. So and then uh, these control signals are so connected here. So as you can see, so this is the uh, PC selection signal. So when the when the this PC selection signal is one, then that means that the PC is updated by target of the branch instruction. So what is the condition to select the PC? for the target for the PC address. If the, if the instruction is a branch, like a BEQ, and then if the branch condition is met, then the next PC should be target of the branch instruction. So if the condition is all one, then this selection signal is one. So this we use the and gate for the, this control signal. And then also based on, so when the main read should be one. When is the main read one? For the load instruction. And, right, 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 okay, right. When the, when is the main right one? For the store instruction, SDA. And when the mem to res is selected, when is the mem to select? When is the when is mem to regi register selected? Is is one for the load instruction? And the ALU, I already explained about the ALUP. And the ALU source. How about what is how about this ALU source? If the instruction is the all time instruction, then the ALU source is the register data. So if the instruction type if it's the, is the immediate type or some store instruction and uh, store instruction, and file type and the branch instruction. Yeah. And then if the instruction type is immediate type and store instruction as type, then the ALU source should be one because the source of the this ALU should be comes is comes from immediate generator. How about the reg write? Register write is should be one for the load and R type instruction. So, so based on the instruction, then we can generate these control signals, the control unit generator. These controls, yeah. So control units can be uh, designed like this. And then so 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 this slide summarized the some control signals and data pass flow for the R type instruction. So some other data pass and then some other control signals are colored gray. It's colored as gray. So you can see the some. Uh, what is that? Uh, some activated data path and control signals for R type instructions. And then for the load instruction, what's that? This memory is required. The memory should be accessed. So the memory is it, memory data memory is activated, but this register is not used. So you can see that some. Uh, activate the component and the control signals for the different type of instructions. And then BEQ, uh, the register is not used to, but then this a, uh, some PC update part is activated. So this so is done. It's a single cycle process of design. So and then it's very simple. So, so so this process processor can execute the every instructions within one cycle and then so 
uh, it is simple. It's a very simple processor architecture, and it's done. Done. <laughs> so, but this single cycle processor has the performance issue. Why is the perform? Why? For this single cycle processor, need to activate the every data path. So that means that. For the load instruction, let's see the load instruction. For the load instruction, the program program count should program count generate the uh, program count value for the load instruction, and then if the PC is generated from the program count register, then instruction memory should be accessed. So that means that based on the, this program count value, the instruction is fetched from the instruction memory. After that, after that, the register should be accessed, the register files are accessed, and then if the, the data is read from the register file, this data is given to the ALU. So, and then ALU also uh, consumes some time for the whole data processing, like the add operation. Mm -hmm. And then Address is generate for, generated from the ALU. And then based on this, this address, with the, this address, the data memory is accessed. The data memory is accessed. And then the data is read from the data memory. And then this data should be written back to the register file. This is the operation of the load instruction. So for the load instruction, every data path should be activated, and then that means that if uh, the delay, the processing delays, and then for some access delay for the, this for accessing this data path should be accumulated. So all of the delays for processing and accessing memories are accumulated for executing one instructions. So the critical path is the load instruction. So and, and then as I explained, load instruction touch the every data path. Instruction memory, register file, ALU, data memory, and on a register file for write. So how the clock cycle was or clock clock um, clock period is determined. Clock period is determined by the longest delay of the digital logic. Digital logic. Then what is the longest delay? What is the critical path? It's a load instruction. So clock period is determined by the, the execution delay or processing delay for the load instruction. And then this delay is longer than the delay of the uh, single uh, data path. So the clock period will be very long for this single cycle processor, and then that's the critical performance bottleneck. So, this, so there is the performance issue for the single cycle, even though the hardware is very simple, and then uh, those, there is <laughs> the cost for the for implementing hardware is very low for the single cycle processor, but problem is the performance. And then it violates the design principle. What's the design principle? So making the common case fast. But because of the load instruction, we cannot make the common case fast. So because of all the because of the load instruction, and then this is the critical path, we cannot uh uh, reduce the uh, clock cycles for the different instruction like Altai and branch instruction. And this is the very critical performance based of performance. So it's the performance degradation. And then, so pipeline idea is uh, invented and uh, applied for in improving the overall performance of a processor. So in the next in the next class, 
So we will cover the pipelining architecture, and then actually this pipelining architecture is very critical for the computer, computer design, and then also it's very critical for the other digital system design. Actually, it's a base, it's a basic uh, some technique applied for the other digital, digital system design. So, uh, 그래서. 어, 싱글 사이클은 이렇게 끝났고요. 뭐 사실 싱글 사이클로도 인스트럭션을 돌리는 데는 문제는 없습니다. 뭐 퍼포먼스가 문제가 있기 때문에 우리는 파이프라인 아키텍처를 배우게 될 거고요. 파이프라인 아키텍처 하면은 많은 걸 배우게 됩니다. <웃음> 그렇지만은 굉장히 유익할 거예요. 여러분들이 뭐 실, 설계라든지 이런 거 생각할 때 파이프라인까지 이제 아이디어를 이제 가지고 있게 되면은 설계하는 데 있어서 굉장히 이제 유익한 그런 아이디어들을 많이 가질 수 있을 것입니다. 야, yeah. 어, uh, so 수고하셨고, 아, uh, see you later. 예, <웃음> 네, 수고하셨습니다.